Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, sorry I'm not able to be in school today, but I'm going to show you how to do molarity calculations here in this video. and I think you're going to get a pretty good grasp on it pretty quick, and there will be some practice here um, in class. And then uh, I'll throw a little quiz on Edmodo, and I'll let you know about that too, all in the Edmodo post. So uh, let me show you how to do a molarity calculation, and uh, we'll, we'll get off and running from there. So here we go. We left off last time talking about electrolytes um, and how we need electrolytes in our bodies uh, to keep nervous systems and heart and muscles and all that kind of stuff working right. So electrolytes are a good thing and that they were something that could conduct electricity if they were dissolved in water. So that's where we left off uh, when I was in class with you guys. So now let's talk uh, these three very easy terms, which I think we may have actually talked about just a little bit, which is unsaturated and saturated. A solution that can hold more solutes unsaturated, a solution that has as much solute as it can possibly hold is saturated, and solubility is how much uh, solute does it take to give us a saturated solution at a particular temperature and pressure and solvent. And so uh, solubility is something you'll see on, on chemical labels or material safety data sheets, things of that nature, but uh, that's what solubility is. So. Uh, let's jump to the fun stuff here. This is a solubility curve. I gave you guys a little story in class about Mrs. Varenkamp trying to make this really dense solution of salt or sugar or something like that and boiling it. And then when it all cooled down, it it it, it left the beaker. And, and the reason she was able to dissolve more when she was boiling it, she was correct about that, is this is the grams of solute and the temperature. And you can see that for just about whatever you want to put in water, the hotter you make the water, the more solute you can dissolve in it. Uh, you know, that's the reason if you put like a hot cocoa packet, a cold cup of water, it just sits there and it doesn't really dissolve. But if you put a hot cocoa packet in a hot cup of water, it dissolves really fast. And so that's that's the temperature difference there. Now you see there's a few. One's about a straight line. One actually drops down. But it's a, and two. Here's another one that drops down. It's a pretty safe bet that if you want to dissolve something in water and you want to dissolve more of it to go ahead and heat the water up because most of these lines go up pretty steep. So that's a deal with solubility. Warmer the water, the more soluble um, your chemical's likely to be or the more you'll be able to dissolve in the water. So now we get to the fun part, the math, which, which people are always excited about. Today, molarity, we'll get comfortable with that, then molality. I would argue the one you're going to see most frequently is going to be molarity. And molarity is the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. Now this sounds nitpicky, but I need you to know that it's the moles solute in liters solution. And its label is very easy. Capital M, molarity. That's all it takes. That's very simple. And uh, it's moles per liter. And so your equation for this, this is going to be sloppy handwriting, I'm warning you. Molarity is equal to moles per liter. It's that easy. Moles over liter. Sorry, I wish I had a way to like write on a pad or something like that. This is really sloppy, but... You'll need to know that. Now, molality, we'll get to that tomorrow. Molality is not as common, but it is used in the lab. And that's moles of solute. Not too bad, right? Same as this one. Per kilogram of solvent. So that's a little bit weirder because a liter of the whole solution when everything's mixed in together, that's easy to measure. Weight in kilograms of just the solvent not the whole solution, is weirder, but it, it's doable. And that's represented by a lowercase m. And so that equation would be little m equals moles over kilogram solvent is the way you'd want to have that one. But let's look at molarity for now, and just molarity, and then you can practice with it. I think you'll find it's pretty easy. So when you do a problem with this, you want to start knowing uh, that molarity is equal to your moles per liter. And, and start there and know that and know that before you start reading your question. So you have 3.5 liters of solution, so check, that contains 9 grams of salt. 
Well, that's kind of a bummer. If they would have given us moles, that would have been like the easiest thing ever, but they gave us grams, so, I mean, I don't know, you guys can get from grams to moles, that's not that bad. What's the molarity of the solution? So what we're trying to find is this guy. So really our only hiccup in this thing is getting grams to moles, which you guys know how to do. If you want to get grams to moles, you go to your periodic table and you find out that sodium weighs whatever grams per moles and chlorine weighs, oh, what, 35.45 or something like that, grams per mole. And, and then you add them up in your calculator and you get the gram per mole of the whole substance. And then if you have grams, then you can go grams to moles pretty easy. So here's how you do this. You take what you have, 90 grams of sodium chloride over one. And when you add up the sodium and the chlorine from your periodic table, you get 58.44. And so you say, okay, we're going to multiply 90 grams of sodium chloride over one by... 58.44 grams per mole sodium chloride, and we got that from the periodic table. You know, sodium weighs 22.99 or something like that. Chlorine weighs 35.45 or something like that. Add those two up, that's grams per mole. So grams of sodium chloride cancels off, grams of sodium chloride cancels off, and you just multiply across the top, divide across the bottom like you guys have been for, I don't know, six months, and you get 1.54 moles. And so now we're in really good shape because we got this guy right here and this guy right here was given to us in the problem, so we're set. Like This is super easy. 1.54 moles of solute sodium chloride divided by 3.50 liters solution gives 0 0.440 molar NaCl. And that is how you write that label, by the way, capital M than the solute that you dissolved, sodium chloride. And that's the correct answer there. Now, for the really nitpicky math nerds in the class, you're going to go, wait a second, Mr. Stecker, this is wrong. Because you had 3.5 liters of solution, and then you added, you know, 9 point grams or 90 grams of sodium chloride. Well, we're going to go with, you have this many liters of solution that already contains 90 grams of sodium chloride. What's the molarity? Um, if you wanted to be nitpicky with a few of these problems, you could say, hey, if you had this solution first and then you added this many grams of sodium chloride, you know, you'd have more than 3.5. But just go with the volume of the solution I give you. I'm not going to try to trick you and make you add up how much that would change the total volume. So this one's going to be a simple one, and I'm going to keep them pretty simple. I'm not trying to trick you, okay? One more example, and then we'll call it good. So again, start with your equation. Molarity equals moles per liters, because you're going to be doing this all on your own here in just a second. Molarity, moles, solute over liter solution, and you can run from there. And you have 0.8 liters, check, of a 0.5 molar, check, solution. Hydrochloric acid solution, too. We can make that. That'd be easy. Uh, how many moles of hydrochloric acid does this contain? And how many grams of hydrochloric acid would that be? Uh, so this question's really not that bad, especially the first part's super easy. The second part's a little bit tougher, but really you get your, your 0.8, you plug that into here, your 0.5 molar, you plug that into here, get moles by itself, you're going to multiply both sides by liters, which will be 0.8, and 0.8 and then you'll be you'll be set you'll have moles left over so I'm certain that's how they do this let's see moles equals moles per liter yes it does well that's really annoying okay let's sorry that dropping down thing was driving me up a wall molarity equals moles per liter right so they put 0.5 molar like we did equals moles we don't know divided by 0.8 liters like we did cool and then they multiply both sides by 0.8 and by 0.8. That would look like this. If you can tolerate my sloppy handwriting, 0 0.8 point. There we go. And then do the same thing over here. 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And then that crosses off there. That crosses off there. And you've got your moles at 0 0.4. So 
first part of the question? Check. Did they do it wrong in the PowerPoint? Yes, they did. It is moles of hydrochloric acid, not sodium chloride. The question did not ask you about salt. Ask you about hydrochloric acid. It's just so hard to steal high quality PowerPoints nowadays. Anyways, um, so that's your moles, uh, 0.4 moles of hydrochloric acid. And now that uh, it asks for grams. And so, well, okay, now we got to go to our periodic table again. We have moles, we have to get to grams. And so you go to your periodic table and you find that hydrogen weighs 1.0. 0, 1 grams per mole, and you find that chlorine weighs, I think, I could be wrong, I feel like it's 35.45. I don't know. I try not to have too many of these memorized, or I look really nerdy. And it's hard to have too many friends if you memorize too many atomic masses. So we add up our hydrogen, we add up our chlorine, and we get, you know, 36.46. And so then we take the moles that we had, which is, you know, our 0 0.4 moles, M-O-L, and you put it over 1, if you don't know what you're doing, because I tell you to put everything over 1, otherwise you're going to get freaked out, and then you say, okay, there is 36.46, the world's slowest writer over here, sorry about that, grams in how many moles? One mole of hydrochloric acid. And then when we do that, moles cancels out, moles cancels out, multiply across, and you're left with the unit of grams HCl, which is great, and you should get 14.58. And that's how you do molarity problems. So you're gonna have a worksheet at the uh, at the front of the class in the folder and uh, Go ahead and do that. Take your time. You know, work with a neighbor. Work with a neighbor. Use your periodic table, your calculator. Round of two sig figs. We're gonna be in awesome shape. If you have any questions, um, I don't know. Tough luck. Hopefully, your sub is really, really sharp um, and can help you out, <laughs> or the video, or uh, there's always Nick and Brandon. You know, those guys are pretty, pretty quick. So, uh, but you guys are gonna be just fine. I don't have any doubts about it. So, uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching the video and. And uh, best of luck. I'll see you tomorrow.